To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 15, Operation Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Amorah, better known as Sodom and Gomorrah, are the two most infamous cities of the Bible. So sinful were the Sodomites and the Gomorians that Yahweh literally added insult to their injury. He annihilated everything and everyone in those towns with a meteor shower and then turned their names into synonymous with evil and immoral behavior. Today we'll explore the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, including the angelic commando extraction operation of Abraham's brother, Lot, the uncalled for punishment of Lot's wife, and the conclusion that has Lot raped by his two virgin daughters. Let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. <clears throat> okay, so there are a lot of uh, sodomites <laughs> and sodomy in this uh, episode. A quick recap. Avram and Lot, they separate, they go the separate ways. Lot goes to this area, the lush area of uh, the Jordan Valley near the near the Dead Sea, mm -hmm. the exact location is not uh, certain, he goes there, then there's a war, we're gonna go into that in a different chapter, but basically, as Abraham is hosting very well uh, travelers, emissaries, whatever it is, he then, as he looks to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the whole region, Yahweh tells him, I'm gonna destroy them all, they negotiate, what are the terms of, uh, you know, engagement? Uh, should you destroy everybody even if there are 50 good people? There's uh, no good people basically there. And uh, there's a saying uh, about that, Sadiq Besdom, a righteous person in Sdom. It's uh, in an evil place. There's one guy, yeah. one guy who's good enough because there weren't yeah. enough. Not even 10 people were righteous. There's a picture of, uh, of some Nazi rally when everybody is doing yes. a Zig Heil except uh, some guy. Yeah, somebody. Be, be, that, be guy. that guy. guy. This is Tzadik Bezdom. This is a righteous. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So he sends, sends two angels to extract him from uh, a murderous mob. <laughs> They ran away, like Black Hawk Down. <laughs> destroy the cities, destroy everything. Lot's wife looks back, turns to a statue of salt. For some reason, this is totally uncalled for and <laughs> disproportional. <laughs> a disproportional response to her sin. It wasn't clear before yeah. that some, something horrible would happen to her if she doesn't look back. Just told her, don't look back. Don't look back. Or you will die. That was the or you will die. But she, it, she died by becoming a statue of salt. We'll, we'll reach yeah, it. but don't look back because uh, <laughs> you'll die because it will slow you down. Maybe that's <laughs> yeah. the, just like, run, yeah. run. And after that, in a cave, Lot gets raped by his daughters. But let's leave that uh, yeah. to the end. The first thing that comes to mind as I'm reading it over and over again is what did they exactly do? <laughs> they sinned greatly. Yeah, but it's not mentioned which sin specifically it doesn't really specify what is their sins but we can from just the text as we like to do we can extrapolate because there are hints because they are contrasted yeah exactly and Lot. yeah exactly we will reach that but my point is that it's not like a hear me oh abraham these are the sins that yeah. were committed uh -huh. by the S sodomites and the gomorrah rites yes they uh, didn't uh, respect their father and their mother they slept with their daughters they uh, lied in court they didn't treat their poor uh, right no this no. is only later as people try working really hard to understand what exactly did they do so it's like everybody knows that they are evil <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again oh, most of the stories that uh, appear in the beginnings of the of the meta story of the bible we like to say here that they are probably well-known stories mm -hmm. so either there's a archaeological remnant, um, so archaeological a distant remnant. memory of yes. uh, a huge destruction of two two major cities so they can see like the ruins mm -hmm. there yeah and then they okay they tell a story according to probably mm -hmm. stories that have that have been traveling around yeah 
so they are evil and it is well it is a well-known story that they got destroyed because of their evilness so here we get a glimpse of like some kind of a propagandic way of thinking in which the other or the target of your propaganda is a monolithic homogenic yes evil uh, evil in, it is described that when the lot comes there uh, and uh, is hosting the angels and the, the undercover angels <laughs> The entire city comes to, yes. the, to his yeah, door. The say, entire city. This is exactly, literally what they say. Yeah. All of the city was all there. All of the city. And before that, like Abraham, a mob. It's, it's a mob. It's a mob. But all of the city, come on. Children, all of the city, all of them, the, 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 the old guys, the, the crippled guys. The, the nice the, guys. The, <laughs> the woman who, who just gives birth to someone. All of them, all of them, the poor, the, the, the homeless people. <laughs> Today, we don't have that. We don't have those generalizations over people, thankfully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, kind of it's, ca- it's kind of a Fox News uh, during the 9/11, and since then, basically, uh, it's like you don't even need to explain to your people the reason behind stuff because they already know it and feel it. So you, it's easier to paint an uh, unnuanced picture of this big other that is. All of them are the same. Because you want to justify the violence that will come later because mm-hmm. this is very violent. This is very violent. And maybe because it is a well-known story, we guess, in that surrounding area, and maybe because uh, the religion of Abraham in this specific time wasn't like well-established with rules and uh, a proper uh, ritual site, a proper temple. Codex of Laws. Then the scene here is something very, very, very primordial, yes. very basic. Yes. That is so sinful that all of the people surrounding that era can easily recognize the the cultural symbols of that uh, scene. And that scene is probably unhospitality. <laughs> when some people come to your uh, door as guests, and you take advantage of their uh, weakness as guest in your house, you have the upper hand, so all the power is in, at your hands. Mm. They need you more than you need them. Yes. So the owner, a culturally res- uh, respectful yes. person, the onus of the security and the making uh, your guest feel safe, basically safe, is really significant. Okay, so let me, let me jump in here. I don't think it's just being safe. There's a lot of etiquette that they show you how one should treat uh, guests. Mm-hmm. We see just before that, Avram, he's uh, looking around. He sees in the distance three guests. He is immediately very stressed in his efforts to make them feel welcome in a way that in our culture mm-hmm. is way over the top, yeah. way over the top wash their feet, b- bake bread. That's like, y- you are so hospitable that it's just something that we don't know here. And then with Lot, when he meets those angels in the city, there's a lot of my lord, my lord, my lord going on just like 3,000 e- years ago. They say, no, 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 we don't need anything. It's like, no, I am your slave. This is how the host yeah. It treats his guests. Yeah. He is their slaves. He falls on the ground and then says, no, 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 we will sleep on the street. And then he has to, uh, to emphasize again that he really, really wants them. This is how you should treat guests. And when they are in danger, you're, you're, you're supposed to be such a good host that if they are in danger, you should offer from your own people, uh, from, from, your, from your regular neighbors. Yes, from your regular neighbors. You should offer your two virgin daughters <laughs> to do with them as they wish. This is a good guest. Yeah. It's more important yeah. to be nice and welcoming to your guests than to protect your own daughters from rape. Yeah. And the reason I said safe, I agree. The reason I said safe because probably this, this kind of uh, way of thinking is more compatible with uh, tents in the middle of uh, the desert or far, far away in some steps. Uh, there you can travel with your posse and feel hunger or you don't have any you don't have enough resources your resources your your, your resources are dwindling Mm, dwindling that's nice and uh, then you find shelter at somebody that is completely unknown and you don't know him you don't know his family you don't know his background so that person can take advantage 
completely of your weakness. He can say to you, okay, you want me to give you a little bit more uh, water, a little bit uh, sheep, a little bit uh, food. Okay, give me your daughters. Uh, give me your wife. The person who comes in uh, some kind of a distress and he finds this oasis of hospitality, it is highly important. And that's why they make that uh, emphasis. You should bring your own virgin daughters as an offering in order to not break that sacred, sacred, sacred cultural law yes. of in his hospitality. It's kind of like the bread and salt in uh, Game of Thrones when, you know, there isn't some grand authority. Like a spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> there isn't some kind of a grand authority to uphold laws. So you need this kind of a basic uh, understanding, this hidden, unwritten law between two strangers, basically, yes. or rivals. In Game of Thrones, if you enter somebody's castle and he is offering you bread and salt, that means you're safe. That yes. means the moment that you ate the bread and salt, Yes. In the eyes of society, men and gods, you are supposed to be safe. Yes. And so, so there's a ritual here that reinforces this very basic uh, uh, cultural need to be safe in, in this kind of place when you are wandering around. So this is why to, to not even have the option of violence, here is how you should behave. Prostrate yourself. I am your slave to make them feel so welcome mm -hmm. that you as the host, you are the slave. So there's like a whole language and ceremony that mm -hmm. you have to do to perform. And here. that ceremony is, is uh, very important in the way that humans uh, communicate, especially strangers. Yes, yes, because yes, you yes, don't yes. need those extravagant gestures with the people that you know when you meet in your day to day lives. Yes. Those extravagant gestures are important in order that the dinner that, they, they w that will be served later won't be filled with suspicious looks, with uh, animosity, with yes. intrigue. No, L we get that out of the way. You, s you are safe here. You are my guest. As my guest, you are the Bedouins here in Israel uh, surrounding us. They like to say that a guest is a king. Yes. You basically treat your guest as a king. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.